Welcome to HB Tuner's GM Gen 5 Training Part 21. In this training module, we're going to be exploring how to perform a breakpoint rescale for our spark timing tables if we're going from naturally aspirated into a force induction situation. We'll find our factory tables aren't going to be scaled high enough in order to compensate and allow us to run proper and safe ignition timing. We're going to have a lot to talk about here. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at how to perform a spark timing breakpoint rescaling for our spark timing tables when we're dealing with moving more airflow into our engine. This is going to be a situation you're going to find yourself in if you have an LT1 or an L86 engine that you're going from a naturally aspirated state from GM, the way the car shipped from factory, and you're installing a supercharger or turbocharger kit. You're going to be moving more air into the engine, which means that your cylinder pressure is going to increase, which is going to allow you to make more power, but we need to make sure we're mindful of where we're firing off our spark plug at within the compression stroke. When we have higher cylinder pressures with the same given octane fuel, we generally want to go in and lower our spark timing down to avoid knock or pre-ignition, which can and will damage the engine. So we're going to learn how we can perform the rescaling option here based on a few different factors. So there's some things to consider in doing this properly. Let's jump in here. I'm going to take a look at an L86 application. So I have a 2018 Yukon Denali file I'm going to be looking at here. This is naturally aspirated right from GM. So we're going to learn how we're going to perform a rescale on this particular file. Now I'm anticipating installing a Magnus and supercharger very shortly here when it finally ships from the manufacturer. So when that arrives, I want to have my file all set up and configured. And again, one of the things in our file that has to be dealt with when we go force induction will be scaling the spark timing tables out so it can pull timing with further power with further airflow and higher higher cylinder pressures as a result of all that so let's jump in here i'm going to take a look at where we can actually find our spark timing tables first and then talk about what we need to know in terms of this rescaling factor so we're going to jump here into our engine tab and then go from our general tab over here into spark and in spark we're going to be working just in our advanced tab right here now we're primarily just going to be focusing on our base low and high octane tables here to perform the actual rescaling option. So we have to perform a breakpoint rescale on our spark air mass axes and then also how to deal with the spark timing tables within the, uh, the tables themselves. So what do we do with those after we perform the breakpoint axes rescale? Now we're going to find that we do have our, all the other corrections that are going on here. So our corrections are based on flex, fuel, humidity, IAT, ECT, and finally our uh, variable cam offset here. So we know we have all of these modifiers that are applying themselves to our base table. All we need to be concerned with is just performing the breakpoint rescale here on our base table values. So let's jump in here. I'm going to go ahead and open up a base high octane table here and we'll find that we can start to perform our rescale. Before we do that, we want to make sure we're understanding what this spark air mass here represents. Now spark air mass is also known as cylinder air mass. Cylinder air mass is going to be defined as the dynamic airflow multiplied by 15, which is a conversion factor number, divided by engine RPM. So by knowing our dynamic airflow, by knowing our engine RPM, and by having that multiplication factor and doing the division, it'll go in and it'll figure out what this spark air mass, or otherwise known as cylinder air mass, is going to be as our engine is running. Now, because the spark air mass is a function of dynamic airflow, which is a function of the mass airflow and speed density, anytime we're registering more airflow, our spark air mass here will start to increase in the actual calculated value. Now, what's to note about this is, as I mentioned before, as our air mass or airflow is increasing into our engine at any given operation point, we are going to be generating more cylinder pressure. And as a result, as we go up in our spark air mass, you can see the general trend of the table here is to reduce the spark timing down further. This is done to avoid knock or pre-ignition and make sure the engine can run safely and not have the knock control constantly pulling timing and fighting what is programmed here in our base table values. Now, we do have the low and high octane tables that we can float between depending on what that knock learn factor is going to be registering and reading, which is a function of how the knock sensors are reporting back knock activity to our engine control module. We're going to talk about knock retard and all the knock parameters in our next tutorial. This tutorial is just focused on doing the rescaling. But what we got to take away from looking at our spark air mass is if we move more air into the engine to make more horsepower, 
we're going to have to use a rescaling here on our spark air mass. Now, when we're looking at our values in our spark air mass table, they're scaled in this naturally aspirated caliber. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.